Hello and welcome to another delightful video about Latin grammar. We are going to continue on from last chapter about first declension nouns with today's video about second declension masculine nouns. As you know, all Latin nouns are grouped into five declensions. You just learned about the first declension nouns, the ones with a, a, e, a, e, am, a, a, i, arum, is, os, is, i, and today you're going to learn about second declension nouns. This is just another group of nouns with different endings to them. Just like first declension nouns and nouns of other declensions, second declension nouns have the same three qualities of gender, number, and case. The dictionary will tell us the gender because the gender never changes for a noun, but the endings for the noun will tell us the number and case of the noun. Let's look at that dictionary entry to see how it helps us learn about the differences between first and second declension nouns. As you know, all nouns have the same format for their dictionary entry, nominative singular and then the genitive singular form, followed by the gender of the noun. First declension nouns are pretty consistent in this pattern. Nominative singular forms end in a, genitive singular forms end in ae. Most first declension nouns are feminine, but you do have a few masculine first declension nouns that are professions, like sailor or poet or farmer. Second declension nouns, however, are a little bit less consistent. Some first declension nouns in their nominative singular end in er, us, r, or um. The genitive singular forms are more consistent. They always have an i ending, and then the two genders that you will see in second declension nouns are masculine and neuter. The differences in your nominative forms mean we really need to look at our genitive form to tell the difference between the first and second declension nouns. As you see with first declension nouns, they always end in ae, and second declension nouns always end in i. This genitive singular form will indicate the declension and therefore the set of endings that are used to tell you the case and number of a noun for that noun. AE in the genitive singular will tell you it's a first declension noun. I tells you it's a second declension noun. IS tells you it's a third declension noun. US tells you it's a fourth declension noun. And EI in the genitive singular is a fifth declension noun. This video will focus on second declension masculine nouns. We will look at neuter nouns in the next chapter. And remember, the dictionary entry tells you whether or not the noun is masculine or neuter. Let's talk about declining these second declension masculine nouns. Just like with first declension nouns, you follow the pattern of finding your base and then adding your endings. The base comes from the genitive singular form and then subtracting your genitive singular ending, your I. These are your other first declension masculine noun endings. The nominative singular, as I said, could be US, ER, or R. The genitive singular for all second declension masculine and neuter nouns will be I. The dative singular for second declension masculine nouns is O. Accusative singular is U-M. Ablative singular is O. The vocative singular is a little bit different based on what the nominative singular form was. If the nominative singular form ended in U-S, the vocative singular form will end in E. If the nominative singular form ends in E-R, the vocative singular form will end in E-R. If the nominative singular form ended in R, the vocative singular form will end in R. Regardless of what the nominative singular form will be, the nominative plural form for all masculine nouns in the second declension will be an I. Genitive plural will be orum. Dative will be is. Accusative will be os. 
ablative will be is and vocative will be the same as your nominative plural in I. Remember, these are the endings that get added to your base. Let's look at the example of amicus amici. Remember that your dictionary entry tells you your nominative singular and your genitive singular forms. So you can just drop those down into your chart. So amicus is your nominative singular, amici is your genitive singular. From there, we need to follow the pattern of using our base plus case and number endings. Remember your base is taking your genitive singular form and removing the genitive singular I ending. And then you get amic. Amic you can write down for all of the other forms because it does not change because that tells you that this word will mean male friend. And then you add on your endings. O for dative singular, U-M for accusative singular, O for ablative singular, E for vocative singular, because this is a U-S noun in the nominative singular. In the plural, amici. In the genitive plural, amicorum. Dative plural, amicis. Accusative plural, amicos. Ablative plural, amicis. And vocative plural will be amici. In a second, you will try this with another noun, so make sure you have this copied down into your notes. With the noun we're weary, uh, I will give you one hint before you practice this. Notice that the nominative singular form is we're. Because it does not end in us, the vocative singular form is also we're. So, it is now your turn to practice with this word. Pause the video and try declining the noun we're weary. Hopefully these are the endings that you added to your base, we're. Weary, weiro, weirum, weiro, weir, weary, weirorum, weiris, weiros, weary, or weiris, and in the vocative plural, weary. When you parse second declension nouns, you do this in very much the same way that you do with first declension nouns. You need to identify the gender, number, and case. You do this based on the ending of the noun. So numerum has the um ending, so you know it is singular and accusative, and it's masculine because you know that from your dictionary entry. Pause the video and try parsing weiros, agro, amici, and filiis. Hopefully you answered that weiros is masculine plural accusative, agro is masculine singular dative or ablative, amici is masculine, and it can be your genitive singular form or your nominative plural or your vocative plural form. Filiis is your masculine plural dative or ablative form. If you did not get these, then we will have more practice to ensure that we learn these over time. Before we get more practice and check your understanding of second declension nouns, I want to say a few things about number five, filiis. Notice that there are two I's. The first I comes from your stem, fili, and then your is ending is your dative or ablative plural ending. Additionally, notice that it is different from filiabus, even though filia filii would also have an is ending in the first declension. The reason these change is that filius in number five is son and filiabus is daughter. In order to tell the difference between sons and daughters in their dative or ablative plural endings, filiabus is similar to a third declension ending and uses the A to indicate its feminine dative or ablative plural form. You will just need to memorize that this is a dative or ablative plural form. You may encounter it in sentences, but I will not ask you to decline this word on a quiz or test. 
when you translate sentences, you do this very much the same way that you do with first sequential nouns, that you parse the noun and then use it to translate your sentence. The cases function the same way for first and second sequential nouns. Therefore, your nominative is still your subject or on both sides of the linking verb. The genitive shows possession. The dative is your indirect object. The accusative is your direct object or object of some prepositions. The ablative case is adverbial or the object of other prepositions. And the vocative case shows who or what you are speaking to. When we encounter these sentence or second quenching nouns in sentences in Latin, they follow the same word order patterns of subject, object, verb. When you translate sentences with second quenching nouns into English, you will still follow the same English word order pattern of subject, verb, object. It does not matter whether the noun is first or second quenching when you translate it. It only matters what form it is for those differences between first and second declension nouns. So it is your turn to check your understanding. Answer these five questions of what is the base of puer pueri, decline puer pueri, parse numero and numerorum, and then translate your sentence sine sententio vir amicum non monet. When you are finished, Please call me over and I will check your work.